research experience for undergrad students has the goal to get undergraduate students who are not primarily interested in master's degrees or PhD degrees to actually get them interested in it. When we just teach the kids in the classroom, they learn the rote, they listen to what we say, and they compare it back to us. But if you can get them into a research environment, then it all turns real, instantly real, and motivates the, the hell out of them to push further, push harder than you can ever get them to do in the classroom. We work with a lot of undergraduates here at RIT who do actually more research than many graduate students do at other institutions. Our undergraduates are publishing, they're presenting research at national conferences, um, they're gaining a lot of recognition. I've always been kind of careful to draw a little bit of a, uh, an edge with people who distinguish between research and undergraduate research, as if somehow the undergraduate research isn't really research. The questions they ask are the same, and often the tools that they have to attack them are the same, uh, so it really is an immersive experience. The undergraduate research program at RIT absolutely affected me coming here. It was the decision for me. Not many of my other freshman friends that attend other universities have the opportunity that I had. When I told them that, oh, I'm doing research here at RIT, they were surprised. I am from Cornell University, and actually uh, there is no fuel cell lab at uh, Cornell University. So coming here was really fortunate. We had to work on um, simulating and modeling and actually running real fuel cells to actually get real data. What we're trying to do is try to figure out uh, different characteristics to help manage water for automotive applications. I really never thought about being into research, but ever since I was little, I was taking my mom's phone apart, I was taking things apart, I was seeing what, how I can help. So that's the reason why I decided to go into mechanical engineering. Um, I knew for a while I wanted to go into engineering, like, you know, pretty classic. I did the Legos growing up. I was always into math and science, and everyone I talked to said, you have a mind of an engineer. And I'm also very curious. I said, okay, well, I would like to explore this. It definitely helps you figure out what you do like and what you don't like, and how to fix what you don't like if you want to stay in that field. Having that exposure early on to say, do I like this? Is this what excites me? Should I go on and get a graduate degree? Should I spend another seven years of my life, in many cases, getting a doctoral degree? Uh, it's not for everybody. As a matter of fact, it's for a very tiny fraction of the, the population. And so getting a sense of that and getting some exposure to that is really good for these kids. At first, I just thought if you get your PhD, you're automatically going to teach. But now I see that you, there's other things that you can do. You could be a researcher. You could actually go into industry with your PhD as well. And that's opened up a lot of different facets of thinking. They're doing some really exciting stuff at RIT. The airborne instrument that they were building when I was there and that they successfully flew, that was somebody's research project. Imaging from satellites is, is just cool. <laughs> Students get their hands on like, you know, state-of-the-art technology as their research project. I think that's, that's really exciting. The labs that really work are the labs where you give them tinker toys optical benches, tools, radiometers, and in the cases of things we do here, uh, that they know are cutting edge tools because we scream at them if they break them, what we'll do to them. Uh, but really where they're, where they're working on stuff that is on the edge, on the fringe, real equipment, real tools, uh, real uh, pieces of puzzles that we're trying to solve. And then they're, then they're hooked, then they see when you get them into a research environment, they have to step up and figure out an answer that nobody can give them. There's not necessarily an exact prediction that you can make in terms of, okay, this is going to be the right answer and we've obtained this result. Research isn't, you know, exactly what it looks like on TV. <laughs> They're not giving you a research project that everybody knows the answer to. They're actually doing something to help the betterment of whatever science you're you're doing it's you know you're not a freshman anymore just trying to get the right answer if we know the answer it's not research the whole experience of test and check and validate 
and try and try and come to the same answer from multiple different directions is a is a new experience for them and a hopefully an exciting one but also frustrating at times they've got to figure it out themselves they've got to reach they've got to sneak around corners and find a different way of looking at things the title of our research project is occupancy and integrated systems financial aid wants to know the flow of traffic in the building because they would like to know how many of those people come to them they will also be able to actually see and say, hey, this person is leaving this room now. So that means that we can turn off the lights, stop cooling or stop heating this room to save energy and cost. I really wanted to do something related with the deaf community here. Upwards of 97% of deaf children have hearing parents. I was really surprised to learn how many parents of deaf students didn't know sign language. And what impact does that have on the relationship between parent and child and risk for maltreatment? So I had research to present at the Association for Cognitive Behavioral Therapies, and it was overwhelming and amazing all at the same time. The amount of people that were there, the doctors, the doctorate students, um, and I was like this little undergrad there with my research, and it really held its own. The poster got a lot of attention, and every time they would come by and I'd say, oh, Danielle's my undergraduate student, I would always get the same reaction, like, wow, that's fantastic. I can't believe undergraduates are doing that kind of research. All of the students in my lab uh, have presented at, at meetings where most of the people in the audience don't realize that they're undergraduates. Uh, and are quite surprised and impressed to find out that they are. We all stand on the shoulders of giants, right? And over time, they realize, now I'm gonna write my first paper, and my first paper is gonna be one of those little steps that the next guy is gonna stand on my shoulders. And so when they eventually start to see that, publishing your first paper, which some of our undergraduates get to do, uh, is really, really exciting for them. If you have 10 smart students in one room, you would just hope that they will trigger different questions than you have. Because we look at the problem now for years. So if somebody new comes in, a point of view which you have never seen may be natural to them. When you put together a team that's the faculty member, the full-time research staff, a couple of graduate students, and then a couple of undergraduates, all of a sudden they start getting the challenge. They see the other kids jumping in and working a problem from many directions. and. Before very long, they're contributing along with everybody else. They become a critical part of the team. Engineering is one of the professions where it's all teamwork. There's no one engineer that works individually. Having all these students and all the other coworkers, it does help. Without my undergraduate research experience, I would have been in for a bit of a shock when coming into grad school. I think working in that environment for two years really gave me some fundamental training and being able to do those things on a more advanced level in grad school. As an undergrad, it definitely helped doing the research. You know, you're kind of overwhelmed at first, but when you kind of think back to what you learned in class, the full problem solving aspect, um, I do that every day and it definitely gives me um, an edge. I mean, you know, I work at NASA, so um, it, it kind of makes it worth it to see that uh, something that I work on is actually going to be used and, um, and it's going to fly in space. And it's just, that's yeah, really cool. When I tell people what I do and they're like, oh, like on Google Earth. And I said, exactly like on Google Earth. And they're all excited for me. They're like, oh, that's so neat. That like being part of that research group, all, all that together laid the foundations for becoming a better scientist, get it, being interested in getting my master's and then walking into, into my office here at Goddard and like knowing exactly how things work because I, I've been in a place like this already. Most of our students don't have any trouble getting into graduate school. So it's really not getting them in, it's getting them hooked and excited. We lose so many to their first job opportunity. And while that's wonderful, they get their first job, they don't contribute to the opportunity to go to graduate school and all the, the wealth of resources, human resources that we need to fuel the high end of things. And the hope is that some of our students will go into uh, advanced studies, graduate programs, PhD programs. This is, in my opinion, the right thing to do from a society point of view. 
And so getting them an experience as, as undergraduates that may hook them on that and say, this is really neat stuff, this is what I want to do for a living, that's, I think, the, the biggest thing for the long run.